Okay, we back in the home of the Blazers. This story surrounds a young man known as Gotti. Some people may know him as Finesse. On or about July 27, 2021, an indictment charged Gotti with participating in a racketeering conspiracy, attempted murder and assault with a dangerous weapon. Also he was charged with using and carrying a firearm in furtherance of a crime of violence, which was discharged. Most of the charges relate to Gotti's participation in a gang based in the Castle Hill houses in the Soundview neighborhood of the Bronx. The crew has committed a variety of different crimes, including narcotics trafficking, bank fraud, assaults, and attempted murders, including shootings. On April 28, 2017, Gotti committed a shooting at the Story Playground. The intended victims of the Story Playground shooting were members of a rival gang from the James Monroe houses. Instead of a rival though, an innocent bystander a 12-year-old child playing basketball in the playground was shot instead. Good thing the child survived. But what led up to this? Well, as we stated, Gotti was a Castle Hill crew member. He can be identified in multiple photographs and music videos alongside fellow members of the Castle Hill crew. Additionally, Gotti advertised his membership in the Castle Hill crew in his social media posts, through his rap lyrics, and by marking his arm and hand with crew-related tattoos. So, a deli in the vicinity of the Castle Hill houses, located at 670 Castle Hill Avenue, was the crew's unofficial headquarters. Now, if you're in the loop, you would know that this area is not where you want to get caught lacking. If you are not from there, you can be jacked, fronted on, anything, just off GP. Don't expect anyone to say excuse me and avoid this store after late hours if you can. Anyway, this is where the crew, including Gotti, would meet up to hang out and exchange information. Crew members also sold drugs at the 670 Deli and at the crew's other headquarters, 2160 Seward Avenue, a building located within the Castle Hill projects. In addition, the crew sold drugs together in Maine and engaged in bank fraud schemes together. The Castle Hill crew also had long-standing violent rivalries with nearby housing developments, including the Monroe House's crew. Some members of the Monroe crew were sex money murder bloods. There were rules and expectations that came with being a member of these warring crews. For example, if a member of the Monroe House's crew were attacked by a member of the Castle Hill crew, the Monroe House's crew member would be expected to retaliate with violence or put in work against any member of the Castle Hill crew. Putting in work against the gang's opponents, which could include violent acts such as stabbings, shootings, and slashings, allowed a crew member to earn their stripes or gain respect from fellow gang members. On the other hand, if a crew member failed to retaliate when attacked, penalties ranged from losing respect or status in the gang to being attacked by the gang. With that being said, there were multiple episodes of back and forth violence between the Castle Hill crew and the Monroe crew. 1. The slashing of Malik, a now deceased member of the Monroe crew. The slashing was committed by a member of the Castle Hill crew. Then there is the stabbing of Quarren, a Castle Hill crew member, which was a get-back by members of the Monroe crew. We also have the shooting of Monroe crew members being shot by Tyler from Castle Hill. We can't forget to mention the fight between Boogie from the Monroe crew and Lucci from the Castle Hill crew. Not sure if the fight happened before or after the situation we are about to speak about, but that's okay. Let's get to it. On November 9, 2015, Gotti and other members of the Castle Hill crew decided to spin the Monroe houses. They were looking for someone to attack in retaliation for a slashing of a Castle Hill crew member earlier that day. Members of the Castle Hill crew saw a member of the Monroe House's crew who was walking home by himself, and they brutally attacked him. The person they caught lacking was Angel. During the assault, Gotti repeatedly stabbed Angel using a scalpel. Angel suffered a 1.5cm laceration to the back of his head and three stab wounds to his lower back, ranging from 3 to 5 centimeters each. The wounds required 10 staples total to be closed. Days later, Gotti was arrested for committing two robberies while on pretrial release for two petite larceny cases. While on pretrial release for these two robbery cases, Gotti committed a grand larceny in April 2016. All of these acts of violence ultimately led to Billy, from the Monroe House's crew, shooting at Gotti and Gotti getting back the following day. That would be the Story Playground shooting on April 28, 2017. Indeed, even after the Story Playground shooting, the violence continued between the crews. Angel, who was stabbed by Gotti, would later fire shots at members of the Castle Hill crew prior to his arrest in 2017. 
Anyway, the day before the story playground shooting, Angel was hanging outside one of the apartment buildings in the Monroe houses with other members of the crew. Allegedly, the now deceased were there, P. Black and Leaky, and possibly Nova. While well there, they observed Gotti and another member of the Castle Hill crew, CJ, walking through Monroe territory. Angel gave the gun he was holding for the Monroe House's crew, a 32 revolver, to another member of the Monroe crew, Willie, who was upset and wanted to shoot at Gotti and CJ. Willie, joined by Billy, brought the revolver with him to confront Gotti and CJ, but ultimately returned to the Monroe House's crew without firing shots. After returning to the group, Billy took the firearm from Willie, and Billy followed Gotti and CJ behind another building in the Monroe Houses. Angel next heard one gunshot, after which he saw Billy run in one direction and Gotti and CJ run in the opposite direction. Angel, who was holding a second firearm, chased after Gotti and CJ with another member of the Monroe House's crew, but was not able to catch up to them. The next day, April 28, 2017, Angel and others were hanging out in the middle of the Monroe Houses, when Billy and La, another Monroe Houses crew member, walked in the direction of the Story Playground. Story Playground is located just outside the Monroe Houses between Taylor Avenue and Theriot Avenue. Billy and La told Angel that they were going to sell drugs to someone in Carroll Gardens, a set of private apartment buildings across from the Story Playground, which included the building at 820 Theriot Avenue where Gotti lived. Just a note, Gotti was once affiliated with the Monroe Houses until a fallout took place. Not sure of the details, but we might double back. A few minutes after Billy and Law left the group, Angel heard three or four gunshots coming from the same direction, where Billy and Law had just walked. As Angel was running toward the story playground, which was just a few seconds after the gunshots were fired, he crossed paths with Law and Billy, who were running back to the Monroe houses. Allegedly, they told Angel that Gotti had just shot at them in the basketball courts of the story playground. Seven minutes prior to the gunshots, surveillance video from 820 Theriot Avenue, Gotti's apartment building, recorded Gotti and two other individuals in the lobby and outside of the entrance to 820 Theriot Avenue. Gotti was dressed in the same distinctive sweepings that Gotti previously wore in photographs posted on social media, and Gotti's forearm tattoo was visible. A few hours before the shooting, Gotti had also stated in a message on social media that he was home at 820 Theriot Avenue. Beginning at approximately 5.07 p.m. on April 28, 2017, surveillance video recorded Gotti and two accomplices, one wearing a black t-shirt and the other wearing a white t-shirt, enter the lobby of the building. The accomplice wearing a black t-shirt held a white plastic bag and remained in the building's vestibule, while Gotti and the accomplice in the white t-shirt waited just outside the front door to the building. Just before 5.09 p.m., video recorded Gotti walking down the front steps toward the street, with the accomplice in the white t-shirt several paces behind Gotti. Gotti first turned in one direction, before doubling back and heading in the other direction toward the Story Playground's basketball courts. Gotti then ran back to 820 Theriot at full speed, accompanied by the accomplice in the white t-shirt. Both ducked into the vestibule, where surveillance video recorded Gotti reaching into the white plastic bag held by the accomplice in the black t-shirt. Gotti pulled out a gun, which surveillance video recorded him holding in his hand, pointed down at the ground. At 5.09 and 21 seconds p.m., video recorded Gotti, gun in hand, running from the front door of the building's ramp in the direction of the story playground. Gotti disappeared from the camera's view five seconds before shot spotter detected the initial gunshot. Inside the story playground, a 12-year-old was struck in the hip by one of the bullets. Following the shooting, the surveillance video recorded Gotti's accomplices returning to the building and walking through the building's lobby, while Gotti did not return. Allegedly, other members of the Castle Hill crew, while at the 670 Delhi, had bragged about how Gotti had put in work for Castle Hill. After this conversation, Gotti became somebody in the Castle Hill crew and had more status than most of the people that was in the gang. Eventually Gotti would be arrested, but it wasn't for the shooting though, as it was not known by law enforcement that Gotti was the shooter at that time. He got knocked for jumping bail in relation to the robberies and the grand larceny case he caught just days after stabbing Angel. He got sentenced to 16 months to 4 years in prison. After being incarcerated from June 2017 to June 2019, he was released on parole and given an opportunity to turn his life around. His involvement in criminal activities with the Castle Hill crew only continued. 
On September 14, 2019, Billy, JD, and Dizzy drove to Castle Hill Territory. Once there, they stormed into a convenience store and brutally attacked a rival gang member. They punched and kicked the victim numerous times. As the victim tried to cover his face, he left his back exposed, where he was slashed by Billy. The victim suffered a 10-inch laceration to his lower right back, requiring 12 staples to close the wound. This is Billy pictured in a yellow hooded sweatshirt with a blade or knife in his right hand. Not sure who the victim was, but back to Gotti though. On July 10, 2020, he would be arrested inside of the 670 Delhi while carrying a black fanny pack. Surveillance video shows Gotti walking from the headquarters at 2160 Seward to the 670 Delhi. At the time, Gotti was with at least one other member of the Castle Hill crew, Tuz. Gotti's parole officer, accompanied by law enforcement officers, searched his black fanny pack and discovered a Ruger Speed 638, a revolver. A search of a cell phone seized from Gotti in December 2020 contained a video of Gotti holding the firearm, as seen in these two images. Gotti was briefly detained on a parole violation following this arrest before being released on bail. Five months later, Gotti and James, another member of the Castle Hill crew, were arrested in the vicinity of 245 Story Avenue in the Bronx. Law enforcement officers recovered a silver 25 from inside a nearby construction site following a foot pursuit of James. Gotti's text messages on Gotti's cell phone indicated that Gotti was planning to use the firearm to conduct an armed robbery on the night of December 10, 2020 prior to Gotti's arrest by law enforcement. Finally, Gotti's cell phone preserved search history listing several searches and websites visited related to the story playground shooting, including news stories about the shooting. In September of 2021, he was found guilty of his crimes, and in June of 2022, he was sentenced to 22 years in prison. After his seven-day trial, he stated, I'm a be younger than all of you by the time I come out. While locked up awaiting trial, Gotti was disciplined on four separate occasions. 1. For failing to obey orders, next, for fighting with other inmates, possessing a weapon, and lastly, destroying prison property. During one incident, Gotti broke the sprinkler in his cell, causing an entire dorm pod to flood with water. Even after being convicted at trial and awaiting sentencing, the criminal activities, while in custody had not ceased. Most recently, law enforcement officers discovered that he had been using a contraband cell phone while at the Metropolitan Detention Center. He would post videos to social media, including videos where the defendant continues to declare his loyalty to the Castle Hill crew. During one publicly posted video, Gotti specifically stated that he intends on committing additional crimes after being released from custody in this case, that's when they gang. I'm gonna be back. Ops better relax. When I'm done spinning on all my ops, I might relapse. In another one of his posts, the defendant photographed portions of the testimony of one of the cooperating witnesses at trial, along with the nickname of the cooperating witness, an apparent attempt to intimidate the cooperating witness and discourage others from cooperating with law enforcement. He also posted a video of himself smoking with Reckless, the godfather of the Blackstone Gorilla Gang. During this video post, Gotti said, I'll really kill one of y'all ninjas. Even more recent, he appears to be smoking a blunt inside of a jail cell and brags that he has oxycodone pills, perks or yerks, which is short for Percocet pills. But yeah, Gotti is serving his 22-year sentence, and this about wraps it up for this one. If you want some more context about the Monroe crew, search for it in our videos. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.